And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some War Mothers Control. Uh, got another version of War Mothers Control to be playing here. Um, this one super controlly and really high curve. If you like low cost cards, this is not the deck for you. We just have our three Vile Feast at two, our two Dark Water Scourge at three, our three Avalanche at four, and then everything else is five or more. Um, you know, so our Dark Water Scourge is basically just going to be a card that we play on defense that we just throw out there to just uh, help fog an attack for a turn. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we're going to be mostly trying to uh, save our spell mana from turn one and turn two, cast Adal Catalyst of Aeons on turn three, get us five mana on turn four so we can start playing you know, these things like Grass, Wither, Whale on turn four, or Tarkaz. Go in Tarkaz instead of... Um, Averroes and Hearthguard. Hearthguard's good. This is a great card. 5 mana, 5-5. Five, five. But we're going to try this... I want to try this card. 5 mana, 5-8. Five, um, it, it's just so hard to kill with 8 health. Um, that you can play as early as turn 4. So hard to kill this thing. Um, so it seems like a great blocker. Because that's all we want, right? Like, we want blockers. We want the game to go long. Because we have such an expensive deck. Such a great top end. Uh, that the longer the game, the better for us. All three Anivias, all three Trindomirs, um, going with our War Mother's Call. Um, the one problem with playing Dark Water Scourge is you may hit that off of War Mother's Call. That's not the best thing to hit <laughs> off of War Mother's Call, but oh well. Um, two Ledros to help finish the game and an Atrocity to, to pair with the Ledros. Those help finish the game, and of course, Anivia, Trindomir do that. But Soul Gorger and Tarkaz should be some awesome defense, a 3 7 and 5 8. Um, and then three Ruination, three Vengeance. Like, we're really trying to, uh, you know, have some big heavy hitters there. All right, so here we go. We're going to go play five games over in Ranked with some War Mother's Control. Hey, I've had good afternoon. Okay, you've been playing Twisted Swain a lot recently. That list was one that I just grabbed from... The Twisted Swain that we we're going to play later is one that I just grabbed from Mobilytics, just kind of browsing through the stats page on Mobilytics. Both of the Swain decks from today, um, I didn't make either one. They were both from Mobilytics. I don't know who did or anything. You know, like they were just on there. So we'll see how those go. Shen Fiora. Ruination should be great against Shen Fiora. Usually, usually I'd be mulliganing Shen, or usually I'd be mulliganing Ruination. But against Demacia, that's like kind of about the only time I'm keeping Ruination. Soul Gorger's anti synergy with Anivia is frustrating. Oh yeah, that is kind of frustrating, right? Like you you you're talking about like attacking with Anivia and Anivia trigger is gonna kill one of their things, they just throw it in front of Soul Gorger so you don't gain life. That is true. The good part is, at that point of the game, you do have an Anivia and a Soul Gorger in play. So that's also pretty good. Um, there's not that many one mana cards that save saves their River Shaper, but there's definitely there's definitely some. There shouldn't be any one mana cards that save over grasp. We really don't want them drawing spells. Like that's River Shaper is awesome. Right, like we really don't want them drawing spells at all. The eye of twilight sees all. Yeah, it's a good card. Strength in grace, beauty in the blade. Hmm. I'm gonna kill Shen. So my plan is kill Shen, next turn play Soul Gorger. Him. Can't bite on an empty 
Well, maybe next turn's Avalanche. If I play Soul Gorger, I, I don't have mana for Ruination afterwards, which is what I want. Oh, I'm going to play Soul Gorger. Because obviously we don't get to um, don't get to avalanche and kill these things now. I guess if they have a barrier card, I'm dead, aren't I? That's that's what it looks like they're going to do, is just go barrier card here. Yeah, and then I don't gain life. And then they challenge off to the side. So it looks like I really need to... Like, the, the thing I regret was not avalanching on turn three and playing the grass of the undying especially how this played out i really wish i would have th thrown thrown the avalanche to kill the river shaper and kept a grasp they're taking a while Good stuff, and I probably needed to, like, if I cast the Avalanche there, and then maybe I cast, then, you know, then I can cast Grasp instead of Vengeance on turn five, um, and then turn six I could have had Ruination. Like, I needed to be doing, going with that, that kind of round, that kind of route instead of going Grasp, um, Vengeance. I need to be doing Avalanche Grasp. Yeah, there you go. Oh. This can be a difficult matchup. Um, because we're a slow deck, and so just getting a whole bunch of puff caps, not good for us. We, the card we want to see the least is Puffcat Peddler, right? Like, that's the best card in their deck. Because that card gives us tons and tons and tons of Puff Caps. Alright, definitely glad no turn one Teemo, but... Really, it's the peddler. Do not want to see peddler. If they're out there, I'll spot them. And the card I want to draw the most is War Mother's Call. Of course, we're a War Mother's Call deck. We got two Catalyst of Aeons to ramp into it, so that's good. I don't want to draw the units. We just want to draw War Mother's Call. For the homestead.
Please, no peddler. You have faith that we're getting four wins in a row? I'll be surprised if we get four wins in a row, but it can happen. Alright, so if I play Catalyst next turn, I have um, eight mana. So not enough for Ruination, but enough for Double Avalanche. Double Avalanche seems kind of cool. Like seven regular mana with one spell. Like we're not gonna be able to play Trindamir. Ugh. This is exactly what I do not want to see. There they go. Maybe I need to try Grasp the Undying. That's a lot of damage. I don't know if I want to just sit back and double Avalanche after this. Okay, good. No Fury of the North. I was scared of Fury of the North. Up there in the mountains. We know they have Sejuani. Carved from the savage cold. Love it. That's our best card. Ride onward. You gotta believe me. Yeah, Trindamir level up is a sweet animation. I still have more cards in hand than I do. <laughs> well fought. War Mother's decks are just so slow. Yeah, maybe it may be better to play Dark Water Scourge and Soul Gorger. Basically, just I'm worried about dying on the way back. Of them going straight to combat because I don't have any fast speed spells now. Last ship 
I think it may be better to do these two. Pain is nothing. I'm a little surprised they don't just take five, but I guess they'd rather draw a card than have that other threat in play. Hail, War Mother! Drive them before us, Era. This does mean I don't get to play War Mother's Call next turn since I'm casting this Avalanche because we're only going to have 10 mana. So basically I think that play just set us up better for this next turn. We have already killed one Sejuani, so this is the second one. I want them to play something before combat. Let me Ruination. Eyes blazing, brightest torches. Um, that could be the third one. <laughs> Tizzle, I don't know what WC is. Playing a War Mother's Call deck and not playing War Mother's Call seems bad. The problem is, is I was definitely worried about what we would hit with the War Mother's Call. You know, like if we would hit um, like the 5 8 and uh, like the 5 8 Tarkaz and if we would just hit like 5 8 Tarkaz and. Um, Commander Ledros, you know, like I was at, I was at five left life because we just gained five life, and I was worried that that those kind of things could hurt. You know, like that we would just die. Well, this is is that game? It's almost game. That that frostbites all my stuff. So. Soul Gorger doesn't do anything, so we have to save three life here. So we go to two. That was a, just a great Fury of the North. The Fury of the North probably just lost us that game. Like without Fury of the North, we're at like ten and have like no, you know no puff caps, and now yeah now we're dead. Super, super slow War Mothers. Tough against the Puff Cap deck. That's... That Puff Cap deck's not great against everything, but it is good against super slow decks. Especially with the Freljord protection spells, the... Elixir of Irons and Fury of the Norths and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. We may not win a game. I don't, I'm sorry. Who goes there? 
I'm trying it. I mean, Jeremy, uh, don't don't expect five O's. Those are very difficult to get. Don't expect five O. Yeah, we had two ramp spells last game also. Um, we do have just tons and tons of units though, and I this is this is not what you want. You don't want to have all these things. You want you just want spells whenever you, you play and you want to play War Mother's Call that gets you the units. Um, I, I kept the Anivia though. I thought that like Anivia may be important against like an all in fizz deck. Um, so I mean, yeah, I, I did keep this Anivia. Yeah, I mean, Ledros, help, like, Ledros is for your control decks, like, it, it really helps you win against, like, all the Ezreal decks and stuff, like, there's a ton of those kind of decks around, and Ledros is great there against any kind of control deck, that's what it's for. Hey, Big Alfredo. It's all good, welcome, welcome. Good to see ya. Are they asking me to do something? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, opponent. My bad. Blessed by snow and stars, peer beyond. For my homeland, fly away while you can. A world in perfect stillness. I will come back shortly. Ah, oh, an auspicious season. Hey, what's up, Topher? Dude, I am, I am not having any success with War Mothers right now. None right now. They're just not gonna let me... <clears throat> not gonna let me ruination. to one. The problem with Starless here is just great. Starless here is pretty great. Um, so the problem with playing Ruination is that we die to lots of stuff. I could try Soul Gorger and then have Withering Whale available and like Ruination next turn. Or 
we just go we just say okay we die to nah I guess I go soul forger I don't know. Um, I don't know. War Mother's Control not looking good. It's not looking good. I'm sorry, Biz. I think the problem, basically, the problem with this deck is is all these Shadow Isle spells are just not well positioned. Um, you know, like your Withering Whale, your Grass of the Undying, all that kind of stuff. It's just. Not well positioned. Well, also, ob obviously, everything's just too expensive, right? So, like, everything in the the whole deck is just super, super expensive. And... I don't know, Daniel. I've had like four or five War Mothers call donation decks in the last like two weeks. Hey, Pingo. Hey, GG's. Very nice Starlet Sears there. Yeah, I always like Teemo decks. Absolutely. Sunbura getting the gifted sub. Labworks, thank you so much for gifting out a sub first time. Gifting out a sub, I appreciate that. Our second sub of the day. Yeah, I love Teemo Swain, right? Like, that, that deck is so much fun to play. Teemo Swain control is a ton of fun. Um, I played a, I made a similar version to the Teemo Swain control yesterday that we played the team up with uh, Katarina instead of Swain and with Teemo Katarina. That one was also very interesting. All right, so if they let us play something pre-combat, we're going to be playing Soul Gorger. If they don't, we'll be going Catalyst of Aeons. Catalyst does give me mana for Ruination next turn. So, to you think we have to just do Ruination next turn no matter what? You think I need to just go Catalyst Ruination? made it easy. No real reason to play Soul Gorger post-combat. Renation's not looking great against Double Curse Keeper. They just get two 4-3s and then have all their mana to add more things to the board. Definitely looks like we play Ruination, we lose. So, not gonna do that. Nothing to fear. Hmm. 
This again, like, how many units do we have in here? I guess we have 16. 16 is kind of a lot, but yeah, again, we are just drawing all units. Alright, so I cast Ruination here. They get two four threes. They get to hit me for eight. Maybe they play something else, like hit me for ten. Like, Trindamir, Ledros are the worst cards to draw in your deck, and we've had a, a bunch of Trindamirs and Ledroses in all these hands. I think this is three games in a row of us having two Trindamirs in our hand. These are, these are the two worst cards to draw, Trindamir and Ledros, just in every matchup. beyond. That's fantastic. plan is um, vengeance kill the Neverglade collector and attack in with everything I guess this is a, just a bad attack so we don't actually gain life right because yeah they just throw things that we're just gonna die anyway in front of those so we don't actually gain life there Anivia should be doing damage after the Soul Gorgers. Nice healthy life total of four. That egg. I don't believe we gain life off atrocity, right? Like if I, yeah, because I think atrocity does the damage, not the unit. So if I sacrifice Soul Gorger to atrocity, I don't think we gain three life. Okay, yeah, you don't. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Yep, y'all are right. They, if they, yeah, they should have vile feasted their Elise. Um, 
then I would have had gained no life and we would have died if they would have vile feasted the Elise. Um, looks like we're doing this. They they still have at best case scenario for us. They have a just a one one to attack. Best case scenario. Which one, which one of these is better? My easiest way to win is Ledros. Maybe they don't have a blocker. We, you know, we deal damage next turn. We untap. We have atrocity. Um, Anivia, I think I have to, I think I have to go that line. Um, Anivia is just going to be super slow. Not, you know, like we're, we're really close to dying to tons of things. I have to just, I think I have to go for this. Yeah, I really hope they don't have They Who Endure, obviously. Like, I really don't want them to have a They Who Endure or really anything to block. Um, Trindamir. Well, we could sacrifice Trindamir. Um, you know, it would do eight to then attack as a nine nine. Please, no Neverglade Collector. Like we're already so close to dying to everything. Okay, that's that's great news. No Neverglade Collector. No atrocity, right? Like if they had atrocity, they would have killed us. Actually won. We gotta win, boys and girls. We gotta win. Here we go. Oh, that felt good. We got definitely got lucky to get that win. Um no, Catalyst would have actually saved us right there. Like, like let's say we didn't have Atrocity, we only had Catalyst. We would not have taken Lethal because um, the the 9-6 would have killed the 4-3. So, like, the 4-3 wouldn't have dealt damage. And then the Catalyst would have canceled out the 3-3. And we were at 2, we would have taken 1. I'm going to keep all this.
Okay, that was a... Alright, Telfer said I had to battle through a horrible draw. It's good to know that that was a horrible draw, because that's what all our hands are looking like. <laughs> Shout out to Tizzle for turning it up with me. So, I don't know. I, I felt like Darkwater Scourge could maybe help just... You know, it's just a good thing to just slow down. Uh, like, Darkwater Scourge is a good one to have in hand also because you don't want War Mother's Call to grab Darkwater Scourge, right? So I think this is just a good card to have in hand where you want your um, Ledroses and Trindomirs coming in through the War Mother's Call. You don't want those cards in hand. Never You're welcome, Tizzle. I'm trying. Um... Is it really a loss? Is it really a loss when it's against Ash Sejuani with three trappers and three assessors? Probably not. Think you're fast? Cute. I don't want just Avalanche. If I go Tarkaz. You know, the Katarina just strikes and picks up, and then it bounces these Blade Twirlers. Pumps up the Blade Twirlers. Dang, that is amazing. Return, retreat with that Katarina. Oh, that's amazing. That's going to be us taking a ton of damage. And a leveled up Katarina. Yuck. So then that bounces, now it's another 10. play this first. Yeah, that retreat return. Pretty gross. So we'll see. We may just play the Darkwater Scourge to gain five life. If I don't... Hey, Krabby. That's my really? Greenglade duo? Talk about ultimate punishment for for not for not waiting on the withering whale. Who is Greenglade duo? Let's see. So next turn it'll be seven, eight, nine, ten. Actually, no, I'm not going to. So I can have like double grasp or grasp plus Tarkaz. I like being able to double spell with these five mana cards next turn. And so if I if I don't play Dark Water Scourge, we get to double spell. Yeah, they could have Steel Tempest. They could have Arachnoid sent or not, Arachnoid Horror. Um, also, like, just to stun it and put a 3-2 into play, that would be the worst case scenario. What do you call that technique? You small or me big. Eyes open. Watch your branches. It's a pretty cool little Katarina deck. Katarina Yasuo deck. Yeah, talk about, like, I just, you know, I, I definitely used that Withering Will way too early, right? Like, I was not expecting this kind of stuff. Not expecting this kind of stuff at all.
Yeah, I should probably have the box. I agree. The box is great. Alone, we see things as they really are. Dang. We got one. If I would have just waited on that Withering Whale. But. No, it did have the Arachnoid Sentry. If I would have played the Scourge. If I would have just waited on that Withering Whale. But. You know, who expects. You know, did any of y'all expect Green Glade Duo and then. Wayfinder into double Blade Scout in the Yasuo deck. I, just, I wasn't expecting that. They only have two cards that we don't know about. Their Katarina doesn't strike. They still have the sentry to stun. The sentry to stun. I don't think I go straight to combat because I think I think I have to go with Nivea and Darkwater Scourge and hope they stun one of these because Darkwater Scourge is probably the most valuable thing. And that's okay if they stun a Nivea because then we'll we'll try to hit for eight lifelink. I just hope they don't have another stun. to gain eight life. I mean, if they, they stun them all, I mean, we're probably dead. Yeah. That's how, that's how it goes. So we're probably dead. Um, I don't, Red. I don't. I I honestly don't. Yeah, order. You can't, yeah. We've gone over this before. You can't, you can't put out the negative juju of just saying, oh, they're just gonna, well, if they just stun everything. So then they just have more stun stuff and just stun everything. And then we lose.
All right, thank, thanks, thanks, Aquilabot. Got it, a. Uh, um, um another meme tier deck up there in chat thank you so much okay so obviously we're gonna vengeance this thing and then that's gonna be one two three it's me going to two I will endure Okay, so they bounce. Obviously, we're dead to everything. Okay, if they have any, if they have a fast spell, we we die. There's there's no way around that. That's a fast spell. Yeah, we're we're just dead to everything. We lasted a little bit though, you know, like we we didn't just die immediately. We we lasted a little bit before we died. Obviously the big play there was the Withering Whale. That was yeah, I just did not expect Withering Whale to be absolutely amazing later on. Like if I you know, if I would have just saved that Withering Whale, that would have been big. Or save the Avalanche. You know, either one. If I could have just gone, you know, just gone for Grasp or something earlier, I needed to save those wither the Withering Whale and the Avalanche. Um, did not expect, you know, all that stuff. Um, no, because if if uh, no, it doesn't matter to block the Blade Scout because if they if they have one stun to bump buff the Fae, we die anyway, because they just stunned the lifesteal card, and so we would die, it doesn't matter, like, we, we needed the lifesteal card to block it, it doesn't matter, yeah, like, blocking, blocking Fae is not a good block, because if they have a stun, we lose, so there's no reason to block it, because then it's just a one health thing, like, you, you need to just keep it at the one health and block the things that are larger. Alright, Telford, take care, man. Um... All right, so yeah, so there's War Mother's Control. This deck is just, just something else. It's, it probably is just too high of a curve, you know. Like I don't know, I, I don't have that much success with War Mother's decks normally. I guess, I guess maybe we could have had a whole bunch of, one of the one of the versions that I liked. I guess maybe I should have had a whole bunch of the box in here. Um, no, Alfredo, they didn't. Um, maybe we could have had a whole bunch of the box. Um. But. I don't know. Alright, we're going to move on to some Slippery Narwhal. That's going to be a pretty fun one. Those of y'all watching on YouTube, feel free to hit that like button over there and leave those comments. I think I did kind of like Tarkaz. I, I think I could see playing that instead of Hearthguard, just kind of normally with this kind of deck of just being a 5-8. You don't, you don't need to worry about this whole attack trigger thing, because you just don't have to attack with your Tarkaz. And so it's really nice having a 5-8 to block. I do, I do like that, but... All right, there we go. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.